One week out from the Olympia. Well, no, we're less than a week out. We're like six it's days exactly or something seven like that. Days. Seven days. So, but the uh, the prejudging will be taking place Friday next week, right? For um, figure fitness, yes. like all those, yeah, physique, yes. all that stuff. So this is um, leading up to the Olympia workout, the leg workout that I've talked so much about that people are like, can we see it? Can we see it? Can we see it? So I'm not sure what you expect to get from seeing it. This is really nothing spectacular. It's my 20 minute. 15 minute 20 minute leg workout using what I call bio reps with the occlusion training I've been doing this since how long I've been doing this for since like October of last year or something or I think it's been about a year. yeah I haven't been doing any like presses or anything like that just extensions curls I've made a video when we were at the uh, team universe showing my leg development after I did it and you know we'll show it again today but haven't lost any size I actually think honestly to be 100% truthful with you I actually think my legs are better than they were before when I was squatting and and leg pressing, which doesn't make any sense because I'm just doing extensions and curls. But the first thing I do is warm up um, my knees because I do have bad knees. The right knee in particular over here, you can't see it, but you can actually feel this this chunk in there. That's tissue damage to the soft tissue from kneeing that guy in the face at the club that I almost killed. And it still to this day has not gone away and causes me issues, so I gotta warm it up. So the way I warm my legs and my knees up, I'll pick a lightweight, which is like 40 pounds, and I'll get inside the leg extension. Now I'll just nice and easy squeeze. Full range of motion. Even with the light weight, I think if you look, you'll be able to see the fibers actually move in my leg. You see those on the camera, I don't know if we can pick them up or not. You can actually see the, the splits and the twitching of the actual fibers in my leg. Nice and easy. You can feel it burns a little bit, but it's like a warm up. So. Right, do a couple of those, and then we'll start the occlusion train. All right, now we're going to wrap up my legs for occlusion. Try to get up all the way up, like touch your balls when you're trying to wrap them. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't want to catch your balls in the wrap, but you want to make sure you touch them. Not too tight, but tight enough to where you can cut off some of the circulation. Make sure that they're occluded. Now, the whole key to this type of training is to hit momentary muscular positive failure. Okay, so you get all these people that are like, you know, training to failure is fucking stupid. You're overtrained to do this. When you're trying to make the body adapt, what you have to do is fire as many fibers as you can possibly fire with a given weight and make that muscle fail. When all as many fibers as possibly fired as possibly can, the muscle will fail and that's how you're forcing the muscle to adapt. It has to be able to do the same thing tomorrow the same way. To get better at it, increases size and strength. Now, if you train to negative, positive, and static failure, that's something completely different. Okay, but what you're doing is if you're going in there and you're not going to failure and just counting reps, you may or may not. There's a 50-50 chance that you're actually stimulating growth. And that's why people grow so slow is they're not necessarily stimulating growth every workout. It could be once every two, three weeks they're stimulating growth because they're actually not making the muscle adapt. They think they're making it adapt, and what they do is go, I'm going to add weight next week and make it adapt to the weight. Well, if it's adapting the right way, the weight will go up automatically. Like you'll get stronger without even trying and have to add weight because the muscle is adapting to the stimulus. You don't adapt the muscle to the weight, you adapt the stimulus to the stimulus. So I know it can be kind of confusing to some people, but all right, so I get these things on like a diaper. And if you stand up, it will kind of squash your nuts a little bit, so be careful. Today I did, for, did remember, I keep forgetting this thing at home, my mouth guard, and I really like using the leg days the most, so I make it a point when I leave the house, and if I forget it, I go back to get it again. We increase the weight now to 130 pounds, so a little bit over half the stack. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to momentary muscular failure by using a type of rest pause technique that I use called bio reps. So I'll fail and actually stop. Let the lactic acid flush out a little bit, but not let all the muscle fibers start to recover. Then hit the next round. Again, rest. Next round, again, rest. So eventually that, you're hitting momentary muscular failure with that weight and you cannot do a single other rep without reducing the weight, which you're wanting to adapt to the weight you already have. So a drop set, although metabolically stimulates you for as far as fat loss and metabolism, 
you're doing drop sets, you're not inducing growth. Okay, what you're doing is actually working on your central nervous system, tearing it down even further, because your body's not gonna to adapt to that lighter weight. It adapts to the higher weight that you've already failed with. Dropping it down again does absolutely nothing except cause a burn. A lot of people think because it's burning, I'm training hard, and that's just not a fact. The burn is the, the kind of the catalyst for what's gonna come if you can get past the burn. So you have to train past that pain zone, not past failure, past the pain zone, to failure. Okay, positive momentary muscular failure, but not to positive, negative, and static failure. Which is probably confusing. Look it up on Google. It's probably confusing a lot of people. So let's just get this shit done. And match my shirt. Matchy, matchy. So painful. The lactic acid can't flush out. It just sits there and irritates the muscle and it fucking hurts. Alright. Got two more rounds, huh? Very strict. So, you know, you maybe see my upper body move a little bit, but my hips are staying in the seat and not bucking my hips up. So it's full contraction of that whole part or something like that. Last round. That's it for quads for the whole week right there. I don't know how. Carrie's telling me to take the mouth guard out. That's it for quads for the whole week right there. Once a week I do that. It is so fucking painful that to get through those four rounds, and most people, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna go to failure. I've tried time and time again. People who advance, work, they advanced trainees too. They cannot get there. So there's something to be said for the stuff that Menser was, it's very hard to breathe even after like extensions. Something that Mentor had, you know, really latched onto, and that is if you look inside the textbooks, the science textbooks, the actual science textbooks, the way to get something to adapt is to get it to adapt to what you're doing. Don't reduce it, don't go in there haphazardly hoping it will adapt, but to get it to adapt on a consistent basis like that. Going to failure is what does it. I rest for a second and we'll do hamstrings. Hit hamstrings. So I think that whole thing took about between warm-ups, wrapping my legs, getting mentally prepared. Probably took about 10 minutes, 15 minutes total. At most. So this one is the hamstring set. Now you leave the wraps on. You don't take them off in between leg extensions and leg curls. You leave them on. Keep that blood flow restricted. After you're done with hamstrings, it's only going to be another 10 minutes after you're done with that to recover and do your hamstrings. Then you pull them off and the blood flow. You feel it just rush right in your legs. Now. The key, I think, honestly, from what I've read, is the nutrients actually get stuck in there. When you have that blood flow go back in, when you pull the wraps off, it actually pushes more nutrients in. Whether or not that's how it works, I don't fucking know, but it does work, because I've been doing it. I did it with arms for a while until I started getting tattooed. Once I started getting tattooed, I couldn't put the wraps on my arms anymore, because every week I'm getting something tattooed on my arm, and I couldn't put the wraps on. So, without a doubt, the occlusion training works. So, we're gonna do the hamstrings on the 
you guys call it probably the seated hamstring curl. I call it the ham tractor because I'm 23 years deep in the gym. And that's what we used to call it. The ham tractor. I don't know. That was just what the machine was called. So, oh shit, burping up lunch. Oh, let's get this done. So I think the quads burn more than the hamstrings, but these I feel like a bad pull every time when I start to hit failure. It hurts like a motherfucker in the back of the knee. Here we go, ready? Ah. Now I'll take the wraps off. <laughs> now you can just feel the blood flow right through there. That took all about from warm up to the final set just now. About oh man, 20 minutes. I just some foam rolling. Maybe some stretching if you want to stay limber. I just always skip back because I'm a fucking idiot. But that's it, man. 